Split enough tonight. I've got no Roger. Obviously, Bill's not here for. A, I don't know where Bill is. And we've definitely got no Roger tonight. We, we've got no Goff tonight. We've got no Henry tonight. Uh, both, all three of them are away. Uh, there's no sign of Anne, who's probably going to turn up at five minutes towards the end. Oh, Anne's just joined us. She's actually just joined us, amazingly enough. Te technically for Anne, that's early. Do you know what? Richard, Richard will tell you, Stephen, that I'm always on time for my Barry classes. <sighs> I, I I've never I've never ever known to be early late. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> hang on a minute. You're, you 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 you. I was I was got there before you the other week, Richard. Even though you were three hours late. Well, right, so you're always late. <clears throat> right, is is Anne there? Come on, Anne. She's moved it. She does this. She does this every single week. Oh. I'm okay, okay. oh, you're there. Oh, yeah. You. You. I, 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 I'm glad you're there, Anne. <laughs> Not all there, but I'm there. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. That, well, we'll agree with that. <laughs> I'm. I, <laughs> Um, yes. Hello, everyone. Hello, I mean, Ros Rosamond was there yesterday, Anne. Oh, was she? And Barry? Yeah, she was there. Oh, it's just, oh. I can't, I just happened to go to, um, I had to go to uh, see my mother-in-law on Tuesday. So it was too much for me to go twice to Barry <laughs> in a week. Uh. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, even Richard doesn't want to go to Barry twice in a week. <sighs> Isn't that right, Richard? I don't know, no, I can stand two hours, two uh, meetings. Actually, on. I quite like Barry, you know, it's just uh, I got to go to Zinnis Powers, but no, I, I quite like Barry. It reminds me of, uh, you know, my mother in law, she always says it reminds her of Liverpool or a concentration camp. <laughs> <laughs> You know, when you go down by the docks, you yeah, see that, the red building and and the and the statue, and she thinks she's in Liverpool, you know, because she used to live near Liverpool. She's a Lancashire lass. Really, a Lancashire lass? What's that got to do with Liverpool? Um. Well. It's only 18 miles away. Oh, okay, fair enough. <clears throat> fair enough. Right, we we are we are getting started. I thought I thought last, you know, what what we've been doing recently, I I think, I I think it's been flowing pretty pretty well. And uh, I, I what I wanted to do is to take it to um, another another space. Oh. I I didn't want to play it around with puns or anything because. You know, last week we were very much into uh, zones, zones. Um, and, uh, we, you know, we were very much into uh, trying to understand how, how everything was being populated and how everything worked. So we're going to we're going to take that a little bit further today uh, with with Roman with Roman Britain and ancient Rome. And uh, we're going to be visiting Fire Went. So I've just I've just got everything set up online. So ev everything's good. So what did we what did we learn last week, Anne? Tell us. Um, what can you remember? So so we can get flowed. About uh, oh something. It was about um, oh. yeah. It was about something, Anne. Yeah. Um, the way we live, the way they lived, where the Romans, the Romans, we thought the Romans took over, but really they just lived differently. Um, was it? 
you know, like um, how different were they? They were different. But, you know, where did, who was here? No, I can't uh, remember. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll just touch, we, I'll, I'll, I'll just yeah. chuck this in there. They they adopt people here adopted the line. Yes, that makes sense. Right, good. yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> next over to Steve. What about you, Steve? What can you remember from last week? Um, predominantly that the there was an order uh, within um, the building of Roman towns. It wasn't necessarily a preset order, but that. Um, their, their lines weren't necessarily straight, but there were certain lines, there were certain characteristics to the building of Roman towns, and most Romans would be able to recognise, or, or Roman citizens would be able to recognise their own towns. They weren't necessarily in the same places, but it would have a forum, uh, it would have temples, it would have certain certain structures, but those structures weren't, weren't all on... A particularly straight grid line, but they were were, were within um, organic curves um, using contours for, for gates, um, walls, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hmm? So the the, the idea of being um, a space to be recognisable, yeah, um, and basically that word order and disorder. This week we're going to actually take a lot deeper. And um, and actually, back back to Richard. Um, we 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 made some little jokes about Barry and stuff a few moments ago, and um, and on a serious note, if if I uh, Richard, what 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 can you remember about last week? And if I if I chuck this in you straight away, uh, is is the idea of Barry in the medieval period ordered or disordered? Uh, so it's pretty disordered, medieval Why period. Would you, but in the sense of uh, that you're thinking, you're thinking on an archaeological and historical latitude, you'd be right. But when, when you think about, when, when you think about the, the overall, is there anything else you want to say a minute, uh, Richard, or is that it? Well, no. yeah, apart from the Romans, and I say that most of their the towns that they built, they would build on existing sort of sites that have been used by the Iron Age people at the temp, you know, the time. I right. So take over the areas. Okay. Okay. They so, so the pick, like they wouldn't pick a, like a greenfield site. They pick a site that's already. Well, obviously, then there's obviously going to be water there. It's probably going to be level. There's no trees. They would have already sort of leveled the trees. So it's like the obvious place to start building, you know, a new, new city or town. On those two points, taking the ideas the one thing I wanted you to do is fall for the red herring, right? I it wasn't sure what you were actually going to say when I asked the question: Was Barry organized, uh, ordered, or disordered, organized or disorganized in the medieval period? I, but when you said obviously it was disorganized, I do understand what you're talking about. However, with the format of Barry, a manor house, church, harbour, mill, housing, streets, that is a typical ordered yeah, medieval village or a medieval landscape. So that's that's the point I would like to make with that. And when th this is this is going to fit us in for the next 40 minutes anyway and the one thing the one thing about you mentioned about if you take the idea of roman britain as you just mentioned two points with this the perception of a roman town or a roman road 
is the perception that they're just going to be started. You're just going to build roads everywhere, then new roads. This is a perception now, Richard. This isn't the reality. So usually when you go, when you, when you list up, lift up the history books, they talk obsessively about Roman roads going from A to B um, and this going there and this is the way a thing should be organised. When in fact, if we look at Caliver Atrobatum last week, there was already stuff going on at Caliver Atrobatum last week as there would be stuff going on with most places where Roman towns were actually established and the roadways. So in, in a way, if you want to think, if, the, if you want to look at it from an old his, historian's point of view, an old historian might turn around and say, actually, the Romans always did things afresh. But now we're learning that they didn't. And in fact, the perceived perception is that they've got organization, order on the perception of what old historians used to say, disorganization. What we're talking about is that historians used to think, oh, my God, Carl James Langford saying that the Romans followed an old trackway that had been there for generations. No way. That's not the way the Romans did things. Establishing a Roman settlement, a Roman era settlement, on an existing place where there is a settlement, uh, that that's just not the done thing. But now we're finding that that's the reverse. They, they, they did actually do everything that you've said and everything I'm saying. So what I'd like to do now, I'd like to crack on and I'd like to look at the landscape of Kaya Went. And then we, we'll look a little bit into Rome itself and just sort of take us on a little journey. And what we're going to do, I've just got the typical Google here today because it's fine for, for my purposes. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the word perception and we're going to use the word actuality, right? Perception and actuality. So what, what, we, what, we, what we get, perception and what actually did, did occur. So what we're going to do is uh, hopefully you're seeing this image now. Now, this image itself uh, is an Ar Alan Sorrell inspired image. Alan Sorrell was a great artist from the 1950s and 60s. I want to say Alan, Alan Sorrell inspired what we're talking about is what he used to do. And if we if we look at a di direct Alan Sorrell reconstruction, which um, there was one year a few moments ago. Yeah, it's great. You know, one thing that is, this is Alan Sorrell. This is his reconstruction of what he believed Kaira Ka went once looked like. So the one we've just seen is inspired by this. Now, Alan Sorrell was very much of, of the era before Time Team. When in fact, when we think about reconstructions, the wonderful ones that we see Time Team utilizing comes from the very early work of Alan Sorrell in the 1950s and 60s. Alan Sorrell used to go around Wales. I got one of his um, sort of, one of his publications and he used to do beautiful usually colour reconstructions of localities from castles to Roman sites. And they were basically inspired by the perception, by the perception of what a Roman city looked like at any way, point in time. Now we're going to, we're going to use, we're going to just dive a little bit. And what we're going to do is that we're going to look at that building there, that, that C-shaped building. Now, I, I excavated in the, in, it was 1997, I think it was, the, uh, the furthest end of that wall, of that building that looks like a C. And I've got to bring Bill into this. Yeah. Okay. Bill, okay. Bill, okay. I'll, I'll, 
I'll just, I'll just bring him in a minute. Hang on a minute. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to get on to that then. And let's just bring him in. Let's add Bill in here. Um, there's me. And I'm going to go back to where I was. Um, right. Oh. Uh, right. Okay. So, so that C-shaped building there, I excavated that. And I excavated part of that building. Now, the lower part of that building, if we enlarge that there, the lower part of the building next door to the gate is now the uh, pub. That's where the pub is. But the furthest part of that wall I excavated. Now, that was a perception that Kaya went looked like this back in the 1950s, 1940s, 1950s, when Alan Sorrell produced this work. Right. Alan Sorrell got it right. He got that one bit of detail right. So he got that right. The, the other thing as well is what we've got to think about is actuality um, and perception again. Now, one of the things is that the perception of Kaya Went was that there was a wall around Kaya Went from the very early stages of Tyrwent's inception as a Roman era city, Roman era town. We're not gonna talk about what was there before. We don't need to talk about what was there after. The point is, is that the wall around Kaya Went didn't really come to us until about 300 years AD. And the towers around Kaya Went on the, on the south wall and on the north wall didn't come to us until I think the precise date is around 348 years AD. So the actuality is, is that this is a Roman city before 300 years AD of disorder because there's no wall around it. You would perceive that there's a Roman wall around all these cities in Great Britain. The actuality is, is that they're not. If you wanna argue, for example, do all Roman towns need walls? Most people would say yes. In actuality, in the, for the first 200 years of Roman Britain, if we exclude um, Colchester, Camon Junum, and one or two other localities, most of these cities really didn't have walls. So when we think of, and, and the reason why walls were constructed around Roman cities is a lot more complicated than just the word defense. Now, I really want to stay away from having a long discussion about Roman Kaya went because it's something that I could do over two hours and we haven't got two hours. The whole point is talking about order and disorder and, and how the line is actually present or it isn't present. Now, one thing, one thing that we've got to challenge is everything that I've been saying, keep challenging yourself, keep, keep going back, keep going forward. And one of the things is that we want to know is whether the work of Bruegel, following the ideas of Tim Ingold and the idea of the line, is what Tim Ingold's portraying, uh, is, is what Bruegel's portraying accurate or not? Well, it probably is, because Bruegel's around the time that those paintings are being produced in the 15, 1500s, right? So he knows about the landscape, he knows what's around him. So, his perception could actually be actuality. Therefore, the line is a real line, a real line of history, a real line of being emboldened and understanding the stage that is being acted out in the 1500s. But we are talking at this present moment about a Roman city, perception or actuality. So what we need to do, we need to look closer to Along, alongside the forum there, we're going to look at a more recent reconstruction, again inspired by the likes of Alan Sorrell. 
And then we're going to think, then we're going to ask a really interesting question. So love scrolling through these images. We love it. But again, this isn't per se a lecture about Roman Britain. But the one thing, the one thing is, is that we we categorically wish to keep with what we're seeing from Aaron Sorrell's work in the 50s and 60s, and then we're re, 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 reconstructing it in a more recent reconstruction of via Kaya Went. Now, most of what we do see associated with Aaron, Alan Sorrell is put together by aer aerial photographs, naturally. And uh, I've got some, I've got a beautiful aerial photograph in front of me of, of the landscape where I am now. And you can read the, we can read the landscape and you can think, right, there's things going there in the 1940s and the things going here and what have you, right? But the one thing that we need to do is talk about perception and actuality. So, so what, I, what I want to do is move the idea about order and disorder, perception and actuality to what we're seeing, right? Uh, what we're seeing is pretty interesting because there, that's the temple, that the remains of the temple can actually be seen in Kaiwen today. They were being excavated. I was there. I actually saw the excavations. They were being excavated in the 80s and 90s. And they're reconstructed, um, um, re consolidated rather than the word reconstructed building. Um, are there to see today and what you can actually see is bits of this of this wonderful forum which is on the left there so so the perception is it looked like this the actuality is is it does look like this in maybe some ways but we've got to be very careful of how things were in the past did all that exist at the same time? Did it occur at the same time? And the answer is maybe not. The one thing that we want to see in reconstructions is the overall playground, the overall image. But the overall image of lots of places that we see in reconstructions is not exactly what's there throughout time. It's very likely, I'm going to put this in, it's very likely that when that building there, that temple is in operation, and when it's being converted into a church, which is probably um, in the late 300s, big chunks of the building on the left would have started to fall into disrepair and would have actually started to be demolished and the materials taken elsewhere. So... The perception is it looked like this. The actuality is in the archaeology that we can find all these buildings, but whether they actually existed at the same time is another question. And we've got to be very wary about those questions. Uh, Richard and I were, Richard and I have, have been thinking about various ways of how buildings are built in Barry and how different phases of churches and buildings occur and sometimes people get the reconstructions of those buildings wrong that they they think about buildings in having pennant sandstone roofs or slate roofs or thatch roofs and they think well this is what happened at this time and usually they might be wrong but sometimes when we think about the past um, in retrospect our ideas of the perception and the actuality are two different things. So if we if we want to use the word actuality and perception and going into what we were talking about last week, which which was order and disorder, let's try and look at an overview of some of the other structures that we find at Kyle Went. Kyle Went is very familiar to all of us. And one thing I will say about Kaiwent is it's one of those places that I love. Don't ever go to Kaiwent with me because you won't want to leave. 
I promise people that I'm only going to be taking two hours and six hours later, we're still wandering around. Uh, so it, it's a bit like York as well. If you, um, York is one of those things with me. It, it, it does go on forever. So one thing I don't want to do is have this going on forever either. Now, <laughs> that there is actually the, the excavations from the 1980s going into the 1990s of this wonderful building that we've just seen. And if you, on the left-hand side, that's facing toward the road. And the right-hand side, this is how the building looked when they excavated it. However, folks, the one problem with this building is that when you go there today, only a third of the stonework that you're looking at now is on display because the rest of it's buried and and they they they've consolidated it and obviously you know um, when when you when you want to see the archaeology and you want to make it work, sometimes when you go to these places, you don't always have the data to help you understand it, help you really get to grips with what the reconstructed drawings look like. So make, let's make it a little bit more easier. And one of the things I'm going to do is we're going to go to here. And we're going to think wonderful chunk of wall. I love that wall. It's like a mistress that you never, ever get to sleep with. Um, and look at this here. I love this tower. I love the towers along there. And, and this itself is one of those towers that I could stand by and I could look at and I could discuss for about 20 minutes and, and just talking about the tower. One thing that we do do in archaeology is that we that we talk about the history, we talk about dates, we, we talk about reasons. But sometimes we don't actually talk about the actuality, the practicalities. This, this would have actually been covered, this would have actually been whitewashed, right? And it would have looked very different from what you're seeing today. In some ways, the reason why I get very excited about the, these towers on the, on the south side of Kyrwand is, is that they, they, they look in a really fine state of preservation. So if you look that and you sort of go along there a little bit and you squint your eye, you think, ah, that's how it used to look, but it didn't look like it didn't look like that because it was all rendered and all and all whitewashed, right? So, one of the one of the things that that we we've got to tackle now is we've we've talked about perception and actuality, and talking about order and disorder. Now, initially, as we've said, disorder. There's no bank, there's no clear bank, and there's no clear wall, and there's no clear ditch around Kai Went. What's going on? So by the 300s, they're actually building the wall there. Now, the one thing, the one thing that you could say is now Kai Went is organized. It's got a wall around it. It's got everything it needs to be to be a Roman proper city. It's got everything it needs to be. However, some bright spark in in around the three forty he said, "What we got to do? We got to chuck. We got to chuck towers on the south and the north side of Kaya Went. So the perception is is that these are defensive towers, and the perception is right or wrong." And the perception, the actuality is, the conclusion is you're wrong because they're not really defensive at all. They can't act as defensive towers around Kiowent. Again, look at look at that. Look at the old look at the old black and white image. They look like defensive towers, but I'll give you the problem. A little bit of the thing that really doesn't work when you think about Kai Went. So if we if we think of actually there, 
Bill knows this image very well. I've used it loads of times. Uh, good to have you along, Bill. And this is actually the Western Wall and Gateway into Kaiawent. And you note the towers. You don't note the towers. The only towers you've got is the Gateway. And then you go to the north corner and the south corner, and suddenly you've got a tower, a defensive tower. The thing is, right, the reason why I said the perception of those great towers that you've seen on the south and the north sides, the perception is that they're defensive. But when you actually look at the uh, look at when you look at the east and the west sides of Kaiawent, you suddenly realize that if you really wanted to attack this site, if you attack the east and the west side, you could probably penetrate um, Kaiawent very, very quickly. So, uh, but, but just to confuse you even more, we're going to go back to those images and we're going we're gonna to go back to that tower and the wall on the south side of Kaiawent. And we're going to ask the question, in the eyes of a Roman, is this organized or disorganized and disorder or order? <clears throat> um, and what we what we do is let's go to that now. Love it again. We love it now. What we what we do think and, and there's certain evidence for this. And it's still up in the air. But there's some experts going with it that there was actually a canal leading to the um, south frontage. There was a water course leading to the south frontage of the Roman city of Kairawent. Now, if you're coming, and, and do you remember what we said about waterways and roads last week in the, in the, in the sort of the, that era? I, I said that waterways had become very important in the overall Roman era theme of what was going on in the 200s, 300s, 400s, right? Um, now, there's a few points with this. If you're arriving and you're seeing these great tower, towers by boat, you're seeing order, you're seeing ancient Rome, you're seeing the sense of power, you're seeing the sense of money, you're the, seeing the sense of organisation, you're seeing the sense of something very special. So the perception in the recent time and the perception back then with these beautifully painted with whitewash back in 360 years AD would have given you the sense of power, order, organization, the idea of ancient Rome, the idea of what Rome should be, the, the, the perception. But... The reality is, if you wanted to attack this site, all you needed to go was to the east and the western sides of Kaiawent. However, when we're looking at this, there's always two ways of seeing it. There's always two ways of seeing the story. So if we, if we go back, um, yeah, and, and look at that there. Look at the amount of effort that you look at about the. Uh, can you imagine, right? You you've you're on one of the, the south towers and you're on one of the northern towers and, and you see a group of people standing in front of you and say they wanted to attack the locality and then, then suddenly, oh, they're disappearing, right? So that's because they go into the east and the west, the east and the west gates. It's as simple as that. Why, why, when, when we, when we go, when we go to, when we go to Kaiawent, uh, usually, usually people turn around to say, "Oh, you know, um, uh, you know this." They, they they say, "Oh, you know, um, is it? Are these walls? Are these towers on the south and the? Uh, are these towers on the south, south and north side um, for display?" and you could say that the answer is yes. A lot of effort has gone into them. And in many ways, that's what they're for. They're for display. Now, if we did 
Hadrian's Wall this week, and we're not doing Hadrian's Wall next week either. But if we think about the idea of Hadrian's Wall, and I'm going to talk for I'm going to talk I'm going to talk to Bill on this one, right? Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to go off we're going to go off Hilton just a moment, right? We're just going to go off Hilton a moment, and this is what I feel about Hadrian's Wall. I never said it, but I'm going to express it now. I, I get, I'm going to express it. Adrian's Wall is one of the most disappointing, one of the most inflated pieces of Roman archaeology built in Britain. It might be 72 miles long. It might have 75 miles of defences. But the reason why I'm saying it that way is that I've seen better defences on on eastern forts um, from the Roman period in Norfolk. I've, I've seen far better defences at Kiawent, which is a town, than Hadrian's Wall. And the reason why I'm disappointed by Hadrian's Wall is that you, you see in the archaeology another, another thing. You see that the archaeology tells us that there's a bit of wall there and it's really well built. Well, it's not, it's, it's not like the Great Wall of China. And it's not that massively wide either. Um, and you could only get one man walking along it, right, to, to look out. What's disappointing is that, and I gotta, I gotta correct myself on, in a moment, and I just wanna bring, bring Bill on here, and I want, I want him to tell me whether I'm right or wrong. But I, before I say, there's, there's something else I wanna say in a moment before I get there. When, when, when we talk about Hadrian's Wall, we, 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 we talk, we, we in the archaeology it says right we've got an active wall and then just down the road in the archaeology it says around 300 years uh, AD the Roman fort was dis decommissioned and and the gates were taken off right and people could just walk through so what is defensive about Hadrian's wall uh, and you think well what is Hadrian's wall about is it for display it, it, it's not as it's not as overpowering as some of the gateways and the town walls of some of our cities in Roman Britain. And for me, as a defensive landscape, it's very, very disappointing. But then again, it's not. Bill, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you agree with some of what I just said? Because you've been to Hadrian's Wall a number of times like me. Yeah, well, just, uh, just give I, me an I answer. Think... Some... Am I going nuts? Give me an answer. I think now most archaeologists have agree that it wasn't defensive at all it was just a marker an ego trip by hadron uh, it's very impressive because of its sheer size but yes as it's you like, say as, yes as, as a defensive wall no i don't think it's ever intended to be a defensive wall i, di I didn't want you to agree with me bill because i thought you were going to say something else but the fact that no no, no 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 I, that, I that's feel, how i think yeah yeah I, I feel because you've done a lot of work on it yourself so um Anyway, I wanted to chuck that in there, right? And sorry if ever, anyone else wants to say anything, but we can we can do that in questions. And we will go over five minutes into our other class tonight because simply because uh, we, we've got a lot less people later on, so, so I, I can do that. But I, I want to I want us to take us back to that moment that we had about ten minutes ago, and, and we were looking at the the water gates on the south side. And I want to, I want to, I want to answer something else then. But, but if you're going into higher went by a road, then what you're impressed by is the gateway. That's all you need to be impressed by, because right, okay. I got to, I got to make sure. I, I got to, I got to make sure that that I try and keep hold of my my other point. But when when you're you know, I'm going to do my other point now because I'm going to I'm going to forget it. The, the there are a few people who believe that there was a canal going to Kai Wen, and it's been tried and tested. Some of the some of the experts don't agree, but some some of the reconstructions you can say a water course going in, going in from the south, um, and th this ties me directly into this point now. Right, if you're if you're if you've got a boat and you you're sailing to the south side of Kaya Went, so why why is there towers on the north side? Well, oh, there, there's a problem there, right? However, if you're if you're coming in to Kaya Went by a boat, 
you, you, basically you see one tower and you go, oh, wow. Oh, my God, there's another tower. Oh, God, there's another tower. Oh, wow, there's another tower. Right. That makes sense. Why? And, and actually, we're going to use the word. We're going to use the word order and disorder. Right. Um, Kiowa would look really crap if it had towers on the south side, not on its east side or its west side. And it didn't have towers on the north side. The Romans love symmetry. So if you're going to put towers on the south side, you've got to put them on the north side. This is what the Romans did. We, we wouldn't have bothered. We'd have just put towers on the south side and some Roman official come along and said, right, actually, you've got to put towers on the north side. Because it, it was the local officials who were local people anyway. And they said, oh, what we'll do, put, because down the road, right, at Hereford, they, they're building a wall around it, right? And they've got towers there and there. So we don't have time to put towers on the east and west side, right? But if we've got boats coming in on the south side, wow, you know, we're going to put towers there, right? However, then a Roman official come along and said, this is a bit bloody stupid, isn't it? You haven't got towers on the north side. And 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 the one thing that the one thing that gives me creed, I haven't actually done my point yet. The the one thing that gives us credence that the, the towers on the north side were just chucked on, right, is because they're not actually um, they're not keyed into the wall. They're abutted onto it. They're just they're just chucked on the outside. And, and you can actually see that. And we'll, we'll go to that image before we do a little bit more of Kai Wen. And I want to do a bit of ancient Rome, actually. I want to do a bit of ancient Rome, actually Rome itself, before we, we finish today. Anyway, so so if you're approaching from the east and the west side, you've got the same experience as somebody coming in from a boat. Because if you're coming from the east and the west side, you, you're looking at the gateway in front of you. You're going towards the gateway. You're going towards the vista. You're being dragged in. If you're thinking about sort of capability brown and the landscape and, and hundreds of years later, and you're seeing how that works, say something like Church Castle, you, you, you're thinking, well, Everything's drawn in. Everything can be seen. That some sense of the vista and all the rest of it. And you're getting closer and closer and closer and closer, closer to the house. This is exactly what's happening with the gateways here. So you don't need towers on the left and the right hand side of this wall. You don't need them because you're being dragged. And by the time you get to these two towers, you're already in. So the you've already had intercourse with the experience. The experience has already dragged you in to where you're meant to be. So the other, the other, I, I want to do, I, I want to show you that little bit of detail at, at Kaya went, right? And and then, then what I want to do, this, this, this oh, this is just, I, I, I'm not sure I can do ancient Rome tonight. Just didn't. anyway, you can see, you can see there, can't you? That that's actually not keyed in. It's just a butted on. Is that it's the just, west wall? No, this is this is south. South. Yeah, because the the A forty. If you think if you think about the old A forty eight goes directly uh, east parallel. west or west east. Yeah, the A forty eight runs directly through, and it and it's sort of running parallel with the with the coast or whatever, which is miles away. But th this this is the south side. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. So so this this is when when we think about Kiowent and we think about the juncture and, and juxtaposed nature of Kiowent. Um, and the reasons and where for alls. So in, in many ways, you can think about order. Um, it, it's actually ordered to have this, right? But it, it's disordered, it's disorganized in effect that it's not there from an early stage. But then again, it's the historian's perception. And actually, actually, right, we can argue the other way. I, I I I love arguing with myself actually, but but what, one one thing one thing that we can say right is if we get if we get that just just sort of zoom in there, oh this is a nice one right I would love this one right so so again um, we we've got we've got a we've got a nice bit of of Kai went right and to try and get you give you an idea of what's going on the the gateway that we've just seen the gateway along the road is on the far right here yeah the this this is the this is the the other way around so the the uh, the south side is actually not is actually at the top of the picture that's there so all those towers and stuff um are actually on the south side that, that the south side, that's the north of the picture. So the top of the picture, that's the south side. Um, 
And that's where we believe on the top of the picture where a waterway came in. Um, and then what we do see is, is that there, that those remains in the middle of the picture, those are the remains of the forum. Um, and over towards the left there, there, you can just see it over on the left. You can just see where the, where the, where the temple is. That's where the temple is. Right. So, and there's one thing about this, right. I want to go back to that reconstructed image and I want to, I want to, it, it looks like a typical Roman city. And there's two points there, right? A si typical Roman city, right? But as you look into this city, there's something wrong with it. Right. Okay. Typical ordered city, right? Uh, you've got, you've got the, like, you've got temples, you've got bathhouses, you've got the forum there, you've got the basilica. You've got what they believed found in the 1900s was some kind of um, theatre or amphitheatre outside the town. You've got the walls, even though we've had that bit of, bit of a discussion, you've got sort of shops and you've got roadways and you've got water courses and all the rest of it. That's a sort of sense of order. And you could sort of you could argue that before before the wall was put a, around the whole thing. Right. Everything remained in one spot. Everything remained along that main high street, whether it was going north, south or east, west. Great. Yeah. But then again, you've got the other thing. Uh, and the other thing as well is, right. I just want to make the point. Those who have been to, to Kaya went with me will notice on the south side, the gateway is blocked up because it's going across land that would have been marshy and boggy, hence indicating that there was a water course going to the city vis-a-vis. -vis, that's a little bit of proof. But the, the point that I would like to make, the point that I'd like to chuck in here, is if you, if you actually look at this, north, inside the wall there, you can actually make out that there's big green areas. That's, that's disorder. In other words, look at that there. That what what we do find is that I'm gonna I'm gonna take a punt that up to a third of Kiawent was never ever developed as a Roman town or city. Uh, they they there was not enough people living there, and they just didn't develop the city. They didn't develop it. In, in other words, what they did they right order. You, you laid out the grid pattern in, in Kaya went. You put all the grid in there. You, you put all the everything in there. And if you if you type if you type in, if you type up here Kaya went um, oh hang on Kaya went I wasn't going to do this. This is why it's not there uh, Roman town Roman plan hopefully you'll, you'll get this nitty gritty if, if this comes up yeah, bingo. Right. OK, which one should I go for? Which one shows what I want to show? Um, that one, because I've used that many times before. Right. OK, this is this is actually an excavation plan of Kai Went. Right. Um, and one thing that we do feel is that in the left hand corner, um, some over on the right hand corner there, of the, these are these blocks are called insular. So technically there is all grid patterned. Right. But the shape of the walls a bit. It's not exactly regular, is it? Well, mm. what we're told is that Roman city walls were regular. Every, everything was organized and everything was set out and established, but that's actually not the case. But what we do find is even on even in the uh, bottom left hand bottom right hand corner, corner. that itself wasn't actually fully uh, built on, right? And what if if we if we're looking at it, even if you look at that there, over here, that that building there on the right hand side within the walls, that's actually a bathhouse. The bathhouse sort of takes up an area where the road should go, and, and they just decided we'll we'll chuck a bathhouse directly there. So so this is the thing. So so what what we are seeing is that there's a lot of um, disorganisation. There's a lot of disorder within an ordered town, and. If we, as I, as I go on to the little bit about ancient Rome now, because I really want to do the, the little bit about ancient Rome, because it's there, and I just, just want, to, I want to do a bit of ancient Rome because we never visit it. The, um, this, this, is, this is another point I need to make. This is a very, very important point. 
so again there's there's really there's really lots of nice little plans this this is an even more clearer one yeah um and what they use in the word is presumed you can see that there's there's lots of space and that, that they're finding yeah, the aerial photography is not really finding much right and, and it's it's like oh you know what is exactly going on here what what um uh, and 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 it's just it's just so when you when you think when you, what what archaeologists do right they say they say right when they're looking at roman cities in britain they say right it, it's definitely got to have a basilica in the middle it's not that which with a basilica is like a meeting house is is like where everything the magistrates sit and all the rest of it and, and then in front of that you've got the forum which is where the v um i i the 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 sort of eight is there these are known as insular right and then what archaeologists do they say oh right this place has got to have an amphitheater and it's got to have this and it's got to have that and basically what they do they look at plans like this and they say oh that that's definitely where the bathhouse has to be even though we don't know it's there so in many ways what we like to do as archaeologists we like to or order a roman city even though we haven't fully excavated it and sometimes mistakes are made and we presume things are there and they're actually not right so um, and and that there, that there, you've got more baths there as well. So bits of that has been excavated, right? So, so what I'd like to do is I would like to look a little bit of, about ancient Rome, and and can one of you keep an eye on other people joining us? Hang on a minute. If we just um, see there, and if one of you can keep an eye out, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to give a little bit of control to Anne, so Anne can keep an eye, right? So Anne. I've made Anne co-host. This isn't going to go well, is it? Right. Uh, right. So here we go. What we're going to do, um, I would like to stretch over to Rome now. And we're going to go there. And we're going to... We're going to go there. It was there a moment ago. No, oh, there. Good. Now, do you know what? Right. It, it, it's lovely having having plans like this of ancient Rome and this is we're going to go on to another tangent right again following the line following the idea of order and organization and perceptions order organization and perception was something that Mussolini followed in the 1920s and 1930s. But what Mussolini thought, he thought, right, what we need to do is basically around the amphitheater back then and in the Forum of Rome and all these other places, there were lots of buildings. There, there, there were lots of sort of um, buildings, um, the, the townspeople and all the rest of it from the 1920s uh, and, and 30s lived there. And Mussolini said, we've got to knock them all down. Uh, and what we've got to do, we've got to reveal ancient Rome. And that's exactly what he did. And as an archaeologist, well, I'm bound to, and I, as an archaeologist, that was the right thing to do. As somebody who's got a home and a business, uh, and my family have been there for 100 years, and this guy comes along and uh, says, right, we're, we're chucking you out. It's got to be demolished for the archaeology, right? That's a different thing, right? But so, so what we're talking about, we're talking about, we're talking about Mussolini's ideas of order and organization of the past, his perceptions of the past, his understanding of the past and how the past should be performed and should be shown at any one point in time. So what, what, what we do see is that throughout the mess and the melee of ancient Rome, which is brought back to us, Mussolini says this is the way it should be, right? But if we if we go back, there's a point to be made there. Oh, hang on, there's a point to be made there. Where's my point? Here we go. This would be familiar to some of you. That's the central area of the forum, and all the lots of the wonderful buildings that are, are now available to see in in central Rome, very near the Colosseum, and and the the one the Palatine Hill area and all the rest of it. That that's that's coming into. That's coming into the idea. But this is the forum itself. And, and 
the the one the one thing the one thing that Tim Ingold would say is that we we want all the layers of history. We want the med medieval layers of history. We want the more recent layers of history. We want Roman history. Why can't all this work together? Mussolini said, no, what we want, to, we want order. We want to see ancient Rome and we don't want any of this modern crap around. Right. Um, and again, people, people's, again, people's idea of ancient Rome would not be very good if there was medieval um, sort of theatres and sort of, sort of um, Renaissance buildings around. They wouldn't be able to see any of this now because it would all be lost within, within all the other stuff that has built up that, that Ingold would talk about the line and, and how the past should be seen or the pa or necessarily the past isn't seen right so so th this is this is that thing isn't it order and disorder right so for the next few minutes and is there anyone else waiting there for us please um I can't see anyone else there's no one else there. We're, we're, okay, we'll just crack on for a little bit. As I say, the three troublemakers ain't you oh, tonight. Goff, Goff, Goff's in Goff's <laughs> in Madeira, right? Uh, Henry's Henry's in Canada. Um, Jane's away. Uh, Roger's given his apologies. Bill's obviously here. Anne's here. Hmm. No, no idea where Dell is. Stephen's here. Oh. Uh, and Richard's here. So I think this is basically it. Yeah. And we've got we've got four people watching online as well. So what I want us to, to do is, is just have a quick little look at Rome and, and just 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 sort of just try and think, well, what's going on? Right. Um, and this might surprise us. So let, let's just go back to where we were. And what's going to surprise us. Is. Look at that. Oh, does that look absolutely spectacular? Well. The one, the one thing I would say is that the Romans made all this up. You know, they, they, nobody sat down on a Wednesday afternoon and said, "Oh, what we'll do?" Uh, you know, we've we've got to plan all this out, and we've we've got to make sure that this is here and that's there and so on, right? Rome, Rome was Rome was um, organic; it grew, um, and initially, nobody said that anything needs to be anywhere. Everything was built in a in in the way it needed to be built, and it was a city of one million people. Rome itself was so crammed that very nearby there were tenement blocks near the center of imperial power in Rome back in the one hundreds. There were poor people living in the streets not far away. There were the masses in this great Colosseum of Vespasian. There, there were masses of people going into it, seeing whatever was going on in there. But this would surprise us. Rome itself was completely disorganized. It was completely disordered. But Rome wished to put its order on the rest of the world. In a way, what Mussolini did was a little bit of a, a microcosm of the old world order of ancient Rome. Basically he thought, right, it was all set out. It was all organized. Mussolini wanted to be this great sort of dictator. He wanted to create this great empire in the Roman way. But nobody ever sat out in ancient Rome and said, we're going to do this and we're going to go in this direction. And we're going to understand the world in, in, in a certain way. Um, but Mussolini thought that that's the way it was. And, you know, and eventually Mussolini uh, came a cropper. Uh, he was taken from power in 1943, eventually hung um, on the 28th of April uh, in 1945. But that's because he believed that Rome always had a sense of order, but it never did. There, there, there was, uh, Rome was completely disorganized. If you, if you think about how Rome worked, um, how Rome functioned. Rome basically had a bread supply that could last in a day. If if bread didn't enter the city, then people would starve. That's not a sense of organization. So in many ways, when when we think about Rome, we think about Rome's aspirations outside its place of uh, of being Rome 
trying to get my words in there. Um, the ideal of Rome was what it what it tried to create. Emboldened, people thought that Rome was the be all and end all, but it wasn't that way. Um, and there's one final point to be made, and it takes us back to Londinium, right? And what we're going to do, we're going to take us back to Londinium, and there's a point to be made. And it's about dictators, and it's about control, and it's about warnings from the past. And that's a very, very important point to be made. So what we're going to do, we're, we're going to, uh, and I'm just going to double check that we've, we've, we've got nobody waiting there still. Um, and no. we, we still we still got nobody waiting there. What I what I got to do something that I wasn't going to do today, and uh, and next week, um, I'm just going to do. We're going to hang on a minute. Tell you about next week in a moment. Learn in the Londinium reconstruction. Okay, let's have a bit of a reconstruction, right? And there's there's a point. I might struggle getting this point across, but. I'm going to give it a go um, and see if we can bring all the order, disorganized lines and everything together. Uh, let's just see if I can do that. Um, reconstruction of Rome, uh, Roman London. Um, I might actually choose the one on the right there. Or then again, do I choose the one on the left? Let's just see that one there. That'll do. Uh, actually, that sort of shows what I want to show, really. This is this is this is Roman London, probably uh, around the year two hundred years AD. And to give you an idea where we are, the amphitheatre there is where the Guildhall is now in London. That's where the amphitheatre is, Guildhall. They excavated bits of it before and also in the nineteen eighties. And over on that far side is where the Tower of London is. That's where the Tower of London is. So you can get an idea where you are. And obviously on the the, the top part of the picture is where Southwark is. We're, we're, we're looking the wrong way round again, right? So that massive point I want to make, I want to say before we finish today, is I would like to say that you're going across the bridge and you're going towards this building. Well, by about the 300s, big chunks of this basilica were being demolished. Right. And there's a point. I think I think the idea of following the line and uh, and everything is that we see the changes within the landscape. One minute there's this great basilica and the next minute they demolished it. That would be following the order and the line with Tim Ingold. Right. If we if what the aspiration of Rome was not actually a reality. And it's something that I'm struggling saying. The, the emboldened reality of Rome, there's, there's no, people thought there was a Rome. People believed that Rome was, was this great thing. Ro Rome was this, th this amazing ideal. Rome went out and Rome took lots of its ideas and technology from everyone. It wanted people to feel Roman and it wanted to say, look at, Look at look at Imperial Rome, look at the city of Rome, but it was a bloody mess. If you closed your eyes and you went, oh, that's beautiful. Close your eyes, go down the street. That's beautiful. Close your eyes, goes into a Colosseum, but you've got to ignore everything else. And I'm hoping I get my point across that when, when Rome basically came over here and they said, oh, what we're going to do, we're going to have basilicas and, and forum. That's what we're going to do. Because that's what we got in Rome. We've got a basilica in a former forum. In Rome. It looked nothing like that. It really didn't. But what it did have was columns. It had a roof. It had it had a ground first floor and second floor. Yeah, the, the forum was a lot bigger than that in Rome. But we'll have these little miniature forums and basilicas everywhere because, you know, that's the way it should be. But there's one different thing with Rome. It's sorry to sound ex excited. There's one big thing about Rome is that Rome had hundreds of years to develop into the mess that it became by two, 300 years AD. We were told to build these bloody things because that's what Rome looks like. People would feel at home coming here. So we produced these buildings. We tried to be like Rome, but we failed. 
We failed because the basilica was more or less demolished. It was practically flattened by 350. We had absorbed Rome, tried to become Rome, but nobody be could, could become Rome. Nobody could be, be the eternal city of Rome itself. Nobody could aspire to be like the Roman ideal because simply it didn't exist. And, and finally, this is very difficult for me to say that, but we'll go, we'll go to one other point as well, and then we'll finish, right? And um, those of you can decide whether we're going to have the other class after this, because I know some of you will only do this little one with me. Um, you know, when, when Rome, when the Roman era as an ideal finished, coming into the 450s, I tell you about, by the, about the 450s, if people still felt they were Roman in, in the center of Londinium, right? they would think, oh, crap, this is not really a good place to be. Even people in the city of Rome itself in 450 didn't feel that they were part of something. By 476, the, the Roman Empire in the West was over. Thank, thank bloody duty, it's over. That sort of rotting Rome, um, the Seneca curve, the end of it was gone. Thank God it's gone, it's finished, right? And then, then... Rome, as an ideal, left that very day. The smoking embers of empire disappeared. The calling out for Rome had gone. Rome no longer existed. And we turned our backs on something that, that we were told was part of our lives. It was no longer part of our lives. The Latin that people may have spoke in the odd tavern or the forum was a language now given over to the monks and people who wanted to use Latin for their own devices. That was a very hard one today because it, it goes against everything that maybe I wanted to say or, or should be saying. But uh, we, we, will, we will be following uh, more of this next week, but we will be going far away from ancient Rome. And I, I want us to... Uh, again, evolve, evolve what we've been doing and, and just, just keep this line going uh, um, and go from there. So what we're going to do, we're, we're going to stop that now. And I, I know Richard's probably got his dinner waiting on the table. I really don't care. Um, but, uh, <laughs> because uh, 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 Bill, Bill, Bill's probably got a woman there doing his dinner, one, one of those gorgeous women that he hangs around with. right? So what we're going to do, talking about gorgeous women, Steve. Yeah. Go for it. Um, it was just a quick question. Um, so in terms of the development of these, these provincial cities outside of sort of uh, Imperial Rome, did they ever, did, how many people would have actually ever been to Rome to see it? Was, it? was there a plan that they used or was it a perception of what an idealised version of Rome should look like, which they then reflected in, this, in their own cities? Uh, right, yeah, actually, 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 if nobody else comes in on that, that, that's a really interesting one, right? There was no such thing as a Roman pilgrimage. So if you're a Christian, for example, hundreds of years later, you may go to the Holy Land and understand what Christianity was about. There was no sense of, of being in Britain um, and going on a pilgrimage to Rome. What you might do, you might send, send your son to Rome to be educated or somewhere near Rome, right? And maybe the ideas and the aspirations of Rome may be emboldened, in, embodied inside you. In many ways, what we have explained today, and you've seen it, that it, what, what, what used to happen, right? They used to, ha they used to sit in the, in the basilica. The magistrates used to sit in the basilica. There may have been 10 of them. Practically all of them were probably local born, right? And they were basically told, right, um, somebody's turned around and said, you've got to build a wall. And they're thinking, well, um, what does this wall look like? And well, we, uh, yeah, well, it, it's, it's got to be in a certain way. Um, and we, we've just been told, or oh, somebody down the road is building a wall, so we've got to build a wall, right? Um, and actually, actually, there's a case in point here that there were so many people in Roman Britain who wanted to be like the Joneses. They decided to build 
um, a building with linear lines and sort of all that stuff, which is not natural, as we know. And they might build a hypercore system. They won't get a local, not a local builder, and they'll get a guy who knows how to build a hypercore system who's been trained in London. There's somebody from the Caribbean School of Mosaic Making uh, from um, um, uh, Siren Sester. We'll bring him in over, right? And they can build a, a mosaic and we'll build a hypercore system, right? And, and, and they might walk on the um, mosaic, but they might never fire the hypercore system. So... There's order in their aspirations to be Roman, right? But the actual line, the actual evidence tells us that they that they were acting it out. Um, you know, they 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 were they they were acting out the idea of Rome, not necessarily Roman, because mm -hmm. the, the 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 greatest. The greatest, I've not really studied this, and I, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I know enough to make this following statement. Uh, when Britain ceased, when when India ceased ceased to become British, right? They couldn't wait to get rid of the shackles of empire straight away. They couldn't wait to get rid of it. Um, it it it's it, they couldn't wait to get rid of the the ties of the British Empire. You could say that they kept English as a language, which is a lot more than we did with Latin. Um, but they looked towards their own their own sense of democracy. They had a different sense or they had a different democracy and, and so on and so on. So it, it doesn't take a lot to realize if it doesn't take a lot to scrape under the surface that people are actually um, not really in the Roman era at all. They're just acting it out. Yeah. And they acted it out for a very, very long time. But the, um, but we know they acted it out for a very long time. And, and there, there's lots of historians there, there, there's okay if he's watching this now I'll, I'll mention him right he's called ross broderstock right he, he says he says carl we don't think alike on lots of things we think alike on some things and he says you're still obsessed with the roman idea and you're still obsessed that the romans did this and the romans did that for us and i keep saying if you actually read my bloody books i don't actually say that i actually say that we did this we did that right um and and it's just that it's just that switch they, they, there was a switch, and one night they're no longer um, in the Roman ideal, and, and, and that's what happens. Uh, it, it's like being in the wilderness and being set free, and, and then you're um, stripping all your clothes off and you're ready naked. As an adage, not, not something to laugh at, not something to be uh, comedical, but, um, you know, I, I'll say it as it is, right? Uh, in the summer, it was really hot, right? So I'd wake up in the morning, right? And I would just go outside completely stark, bloody naked. Well, that's that's not the natural thing to do. Um, however, I couldn't give a damn. I'm in, I'm in the middle of the countryside. Nobody can see me. I don't care, right? But look, we're talking not as a joking thing. Uh, that's actually reality. There's, no, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing non-serious or serious about that. That's the way it is. And the way it is, is that um, what... What I think, what I think, what we've done over these past few months is following the line, Tim and Girl, the straight and, and the curved, and, and looking through all the layers, which ain't layers, and, and we're looking at all this. It all makes sense, but trying to put that on the Roman idea is very difficult because the Roman world doesn't make sense. We're told it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense, and the reason it doesn't make sense is because when we look at other uh, periods in history. When we look at those other periods of history, um, like the Mesolithic period, which we should be doing this after this class. When we look at the Mesolithic period, for example, we, we think, oh, we don't know much about the Mesolithic period. We've got to struggle and understand it. We've got to do X, Y and Z. Right. But when we really look into the Mesolithic period, we can understand it. Well, there's so much about the Roman world. We haven't dared try to understand it. So when we get things in the Roman world that, that challenge what we know, we think, oh, my God, it's the end of the world. We really can't understand that. No, no, that's you. Don't. That's you. <laughs> we don't. No, no, it is me. No, hang on a minute. And it is me. But Rome is far more deeper than I give my lectures on it about. Um, I, but, but I do think that our perception, if you're using the word perception, you know, yeah. we've got wonderful you know we've had wonderful writers you know Shakespeare um all the church uh literature then you've got Roman writers you know we've got a lot of written 
information about Rome. And as you say, we've got a lot of perceptions, which you are, you know, archaeologists now are finding that that they're not actual, they're not reality. And yes. that's good, you know, it's a disillusionment of the Roman, you know, the Roman ideal. And and uh, it is disappointing. It's, it's, you know, it could make you quite depressed because, you know, all these years, you thought that was like the, you know, the, the sort of standard, you know, that you set your civilization by, you know. Um, and, 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 and actually, you, you're right in what you've just said. Uh, there, there's there's another important point there. We're still we're still with Steve, and but there's a, there's another important point there that um, you know, Roman Britain is not is is really not Roman Britain. It it it's 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 uh, an image of, of mm. what people felt Rome should have been about. And 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 when the military left, which is most of the military, Britain was left thinking, oh look at us, we're Roman. And and people mm. and people in Rome are saying, no, you're bloody not. But yeah, if you want to be Roman, you can, right? And I mm. experienced, I, I I experienced when a queen died, mm. um, the day after, uh, I experienced everything that I had believed that I was, a subject of the queen, um, mm. having that oath to the queen, um, mm. having my having my identity as the queen, my passport, my stamps, my money, uh, the, the the police. All our emblems and everything, everything, yeah. right? That that disappeared, mm. and and now I'm lost. Yeah. I I don't have a I don't have a country. I don't have an identity. Um, I I I you and and you could say that that's nonsense, but I I'm a Welsh nationalist who used to believe in the monarchy. Well, I, right? I, I feel, now I now, now like I that. don't now I don't have my queen, right? And I don't believe that King Charles is my king. I believe that the queen was my queen, right? Mm. But I've got no oath of allegiance to uh, Prince Charles. I've got no identity, and this yeah. and, and, and uh, my microcosm is their is their huge sense of not knowing who the hell they were when there's no longer any Roman ships sailing into Londinium, and that mm. is is quite catastrophic when you think about it. And the, the other thing as well is we're no longer we're no longer part of Europe, right? Mm. Um, and, and uh, I told you we had lessons from history. We're no longer part of Europe, right? I'm sending stuff to France, right? And to send stuff to France now, you've got to have a license. You've got to pay for a license to send stuff to France and Germany, right? Mm -hmm. You've got to pay taxes. You've got to do things that I don't really understand, right? Which five years ago, you could chuck stuff in a box and you could send it to France and Germany, right? Mm -hmm. So things have changed massively. And that's yeah. because of Brexit. So our world changed. I'm not saying I'm pro an anti-Brexit because you, you, people know what, how I feel. But the fact of the matter is what I'm saying is that things change. And, and what we've got to do is we've got to see that in history. and We've got to understand it because lessons from the past are for us to learn. If you don't learn from the past, you're doomed to repeat its mistakes. And I tell you what, we're making a lot of bloody mistakes now. Well, that that's that's what you're saying. And this is the... This is the thing that I'm worried about is that, you know, we're just making those awful blunders that they did in Rome and in these big civilizations, you know, and, and what happened all to the them? time. They just, you know, ended. <laughs> the thing is, well, the British... decline, you know, decline. That's the thing. Uh, you know? And we're still within the British Empire in our minds, and we're not, and we're just no. going without. Uh, with, with, you can see it, Stephen. Anything else you want to say? Nothing else for me. Thank you, Carl. God, my God, this is so deep tonight. And you're gonna have, you're gonna have to fag in with your questions now. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to ask anyone else. And anything else, darling? No, no, that's fine. I I um I think yeah, it's uh, something else. London is something else, and this it could take like a whole year talking about london let alone rome exactly thank exactly. you anyway thank you food for thought right. uh, okay and uh bill you're next yeah um from the fourth century you had a system of general order dissipating and transforming into disorder as yes. uh, roman influence uh, waned yes and yes people either went back to rome or most of them probably didn't and just wandered off on their own and did what they wanted to do. I just 
That area fascinates me. Um, around 400 AD here. It does, I mean. To, to actually try to think what was going on. What what did the the, the typical um, Roman citizen, Brit British citizen, think? You know, what was going on? The changes, etc. Um, and it's just nothing I've seen written about much. You know, I, I'd like to. Uh, I liked experts' views on that. What they think actually was the attitude, and what happened, and how did the gradual change from order to disorder affect people, and how they adjusted to that. Such a major, major change, you know. Yeah, I, I just feel the church. Oh, the church took over really a lot of but, it. But, but, but we're yeah. told it did, but it didn't because they. But you know, you know look. The thing is, this is this is what we do. Bill, Bill's very right, and everything he's just said, and I, I understand what you're saying. No, it's not. Um, uh, no, the, pro the problem is what archaeologists have done. They've strived to they've strived to interpret the archaeological evidence, um, and they really struggle. Mm. Uh, in, in, they, they've strived to interpret the archaeological evidence, and they they've wanted to find the answers within the archaeology, and unfortunately, not most of the answers are not within the archaeology. What we've got to do is, is we've got to look at all these tender steps. And, and many historians get it wrong when they turn around and say, oh, we're all Roman, right? It's, it's a Roman thing. And the next week, we're no longer Roman. It's absolute rubbish, right? Mm. When was Rome in Britain? When were we Roman? Mm. What's, the, what's this thing? And then we start to look at, there's different answers to those questions. And it's... But basically, we teach history in school as as you know, Roman world, um, Dark Ages, Normans, and all that faff, right? We don't do that anymore. I don't certainly do that. I don't do that. And and it, it's it, it's trying to sort of um, get those transitional bridges. You know, I, I'm teaching prehistoric Britain, completely different as I'm as I as I look at the Roman period. But maybe that's where I should look at the Roman period. It's just a transitional period. I struggle with that. But that's what I need to do. In Barry, there's Richard, there's 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 the girls, um, and uh, Pete as well, and um, and and we, we we sit down and and we 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 look at the the idea of transition, and we we look at lack of evidence and evidence, and we, we see all that, and we see the development that works. And maybe I should be doing that a little bit more with 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 the idea of Rome. Yeah, it, it, that'd be a good subject, actually. Card, your view and what happened after 400? Yes. AD, yeah. isn't it? The, the transition, oh. the great transition, shall we say. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a fascinating subject. It really is. Well, the that's, great, the what great... call, that's what we call the Dark Ages. But let Richard say something. Sorry. I'm just. I, I, hang on. I, I, Richard, mm. Richard can say something now. But what I am going to say, right, is that you can't look at the line. You can't follow history if you look at Pompeii, right? Um, what the hell? Why? Why did I just say that? But I did say it. I meant to say it, right? Because when you look at Pompeii, you look at Pompeii and Aspic. You look at the twenty fourth of August, AD seventy nine. That was the end of Pompeii. That's it. That was not the Roman world. The Roman world was eighty AD. In fact, the Roman world was four hundred AD. The, in fact, the Roman world was every single day after Pompeii was 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 kept in aspic for all those hundreds of years, right? Nearly two thousand years. And and the problem is, we can't see. Basically, that was a Rome that once was at a certain time. Every single day after that was never the way Roman was because it changed every single way. Oh. Um, Pompeii, yeah. is an, Pompeii is an anathema. It, it's not the way Pompeii is an anathema. It's not um, what uh, the ideal of Rome was. It was something completely different. And, and we've got to we've got to see uh, we've got to see it in the way we're doing that great transition. Uh, Richard. Oh, Richard, babe. Hey, go on, Rich. Go, go, on, baby, Rich. Hey, oh, hang on a minute. I gotta say, I gotta say something in Rich's defence. The reason why he's got no light on is because his missus has taken her light bulbs out. She's so tight, <laughs> right? That's the way she's trying to save electricity in the house. Oh, you know, you're so correct. You do. <laughs> My man is correct. Take him out of the bedrooms. <laughs> ah. Yeah, and and and, and actually, and actually, what it is to save on the electricity, they're all in the same room, and his missus is in the corner watching television with headphones on. <laughs> you can get a lot of heat from a candle. 
I know that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh no, what 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 it what it is is that um oh, it, his missus is actually sat back to back so that she can use Richard's heat. <laughs> Oh God, Richard! Can you please say something, please? I forgot now. Oh, yeah, now. And, and, yeah, Richard, no. Richard's taking his glasses off because he wants to. Um, he, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, Rich, go for it. Tell me. Well, I got a bit with the walls and everything that they didn't build walls for around the cities for the first sort of couple of years. Yeah, but possibly is because when they first came to this country, most of them made. The Romans made treaties with most of the different tribes. Go on. Possibly peace was kept, you know, there was no way they wanted to give it a few years <clears throat> when as the chieftains were dying and the Romans had written in as soon as well your chief dies, all his land is ours. I think that's when all the trouble started. And, and that's when I, the walls well, start to be built. And yeah, it's some of what Richard said. Some of what Richard said, particularly the first bit, is, is completely correct. And in fact, everything that he said could be correct from one one point or another. Um, but the this this whole thing is that it's not as straightforward as we think, as we're told, right? It was not a walk in the park. Yeah, but what Richard's saying is, is about Boudicca. Richard's saying is about the Ikeni tribe um, where Prasitagus died and then she left, um, he left uh, this, this beautiful woman, Boudicca, and her two daughters and all the rest of it and so on. But, but when, you know, even, even if we look at it that way, um, when most of Britain had been really subdued, um, the military was going out and th people were meant to deal with everything themselves and to sort of follow the Roman way would have been very, very diff difficult. It's, it's basically it's basically like somebody saying, oh, well, you've got a franchise of McDonald's, but you've got to find all your food, but everything's got to taste the same as what we're doing. You can get close to it, but it's not going to be that close and it's not going to be a direct representation of what's going on in Rome. So by the time Richard, what Richard said, by the time we get to that point, everything's a little bit more diluted. Mm. So, uh, <clears throat> God, that, that was definitely um, flipping oh, out. That, that was definitely intense. Right. Um, we have whoever's going to. We're having a break now. Uh, we're going to have a couple of minutes break. So those that need to leave us. Um, uh, uh, Bill, are you keeping with us or Richard? What's happening? It all depends what time you intend finishing tonight, Carl. Yeah. Well, um, well, we probably well, it really depends. We're going. I want a five minute break now, just a little break, and then we'll uh, we'll just flow yeah. on to the we next finished, topic. We finished by nine last week. Yeah. Bill. Quarter, quarter, quarter to nine. I'll, I'll be I'll be asleep before then, but I'll hang on. <laughs> if you see <laughs> me nodding off. The subject. <laughs> if you see me nodding off. We are changing the subject. Oh, oh, Carl. Okay. Uh, Carl. Yeah, I, 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 I will not be here next week, so I'll uh, I'll uh, bite the bullet and stay with you all the way. Okay. Oh, oh bloody oh, hell! Good night. Oh, then you'll be away with them. Oh, don't don't oh. forget, Carl. Uh, we will need the pickup arrangement at some time too, because we're only two weeks away now, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah you you are right. It, it, it's 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 mm -hmm. going to be on its way next Wednesday. Okay. Carry on then. No, have your break. Right. Yeah. Okay. What I'm going to say is, uh, has anyone uh, else got anything else to say? Richard, Richard, do you want to say anything before we uh, get rid of you? Or are you staying, Richard? I don't know what you're doing. No, no, I'm, I'll be away now. All right, Rich. Oh, okay, yeah, Rich. Bye-bye. Bye, bye everyone. Okay, Richie, babes. We'll see you next week. I'll see you okay, on okay. Wednesday anyway. Bye, bye everyone. I'm still off now as well. What's, well, you're going as well. Yeah, I've got some. I've, unfortunately, I've got some stuff to do. Oh, Steve! Sorry about that. Oh. Oh, all right then. So all I'll right then, you, Steve. I'll see you next week. See you next Thursday, Steve. Take care. Take Cheers, care. guys. See you Take care. Cheers, Steve. Cheers, Steve. You, you better Cheers, abbreviate Steve. it then, Carl. Just two of us.
Yeah, I, I will abbreviate it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to end this. Well, I'm going to end this recording here a moment, right? And then what I'm break. going to do, I'm going to have a five minute break and we'll crack on. So what I'm going to say is those that have been watching us on uh, YouTube, um, we say with four of you, um, don't forget to like and subscribe. What we're going to do, we're going to start another recording in a couple of moments, uh, and so we're going to end this recording. So you're going to have to sign back into the YouTube channel. Thank you very much. This is this is Carl James Antford. Don't forget to like and subscribe.